Let's bring in Alvin Toe now to clear up some of these uh, issues. Co-founder and head of international operations at Straits Interactive, which provides solutions to companies on data privacy and protection. He joins us from Singapore. Alvin, good to see you and good morning. Do domestic and international companies now have to factor in then an entirely new level of compliance costs given the broad scope of these laws? Morning, Sri. Good morning, Christine. Uh, well, this is not new. I think, um, first, this actually is part of a trifecta uh, in 2021 in terms of data security and privacy. And the one that's coming up, well, today, actually, the 1st of September, data security law um, governs, you know, how they actually protect the data in conjunction with the cybersecurity law that has been in place. And November, we have the next one called the personal information protection law, which has to do a lot more with uh, privacy. Yeah. So these trifecta, yes, according to your question, will have impact in how companies uh, cost of compliance. Um, but you know, this is a necessary part of doing the business. And you know, you can see the enforcements in the regulators right now on big data and how the platforms are actually using data, uh, right. whether, yeah. And data, to your point, Alvin, data localization is a big part of this law, as is cyber sovereignty. Cloud computing architecture at the big US firms like Amazon, Microsoft and Google were not designed for localized data. So how will the DSL reshape how they operate? I think those companies who won't operate there, um, I'm sure already are finding ways how to meet this regulation. A lot of it has to do with uh, critical information infrastructure kind of companies, right? So that is, uh, if you're one of those companies, and if you are like Amazon and all that, um, yes, the challenge that if you have cloud, you really have to show how you are localizing, especially personal data or sensitive data. So this is not just unique to China. There are a few of regulations out here, even Asia Pacific, who has that kind of things built in. And it's a challenge for companies to ensure that they can demonstrate that, especially financial data. Alvin, hi, this is Christine. So essentially, what does this mean for tech companies operating in China now? With these extra cybersecurity laws, data security laws, what does this mean? Compliance is one thing, but in terms of growth, in terms of opportunities, does that restrict growth of the sector? Actually, in the short term, you might think, okay, it might be a bump in the road because of additional measures on them. However, if you look at the platform economy or you know the growth of tech companies on the back of personal data, this is a necessary step before it becomes Skynet, you know. Um, so this is something that I think it's a step right move. In fact, in Asia Pacific, many regulators have stepped up on this part of data governance and accountability. In China, it's just a lot more obvious because it's hitting a lot of the big boys and as a direct impact in terms of, uh, you know, even their stock price, I guess you can see. Uh, but this is a necessary thing to do to have comfort and assurance to the citizens or even users that their data is not manipulated uh, without their consent and not, you know, how are they manipulated based on, you know, what they actually behave on the platform. Mm. You know, um, technology has been around for some time. A lot of questions about why China is doing it now. <laughs> Okay, so this is something that um, I think really being a global player right now, they are, you look at the laws like the PIPL that's coming up, right? The personal information protection law. These things are very aligned towards the EU GDPR. Same kind of protections they're trying to afford to uh, users, consumers. And the whole underlying driving principle is trust, right? And privacy. So. At this point in time where China is, uh, you know, enforcing all of them in 2021, obviously it's a huge, it looks like a tsunami or wave after wave, but it is something that already has been in the, in the works for the last couple of years. It's just now coming into play. And companies, I think, uh, especially the local ones, already have a way of, you know, maneuvering around it and, and meeting the compliance. The foreign ones are going in may find a challenge, right? So this may raise a barrier for new foreign entries 
um, but something that uh, I think will shake out with, by 2022. Alvin and vice versa, I'd expect. What happens if a data-rich Chinese company wants to go public overseas? Does this law, does the data security law restrict them in many ways from doing so? So you might be pointing to the recent debacle about DD, right? After they were listed right. in July, they were take, they were taken off the App Store because uh, the cybersecurity audit found that they were, you know, con collecting users' data without consent. So this is something the Chinese government is very aware of in terms of uh, well, the laws are trying to guard, especially their local uh, citizens' data, right, uh, of being used illegally or beyond uh, what they were consented to. And also now you can see algorithmic controls coming up. Uh, it's in consultation right now in terms of, uh, you know, AI being used uh, for processing phase for recommended content. So those things, uh, as companies want to go overseas, watch out yes. if it's on the back of Chinese citizens data or, you know, local users data. Yeah. Alvin, you made the point that this is uh, nothing particularly new. So is China simply playing catch up with the global standards like GDPR in Europe and the Cloud Act in the US? Or could China's uh, DSL be weaponized as part of the global battle for tech supremacy? Um, yeah, I think it is actually a move towards global trust, right? So um, the big move in the pandemic has been e-commerce, right? And then transfer of data. So you can see the digital transformation and, uh, and all the companies that are doing digital transformation, especially the platform guys, have done very, very well in moving forward as well. So this part here, um, how do you en engender global trust? And so these regulations are basically to protect that and also to assure, you know, the users that uh, this thing doesn't run away, like I say, become a Skynet, right? Where the data is being used or their personal data is being used without their consent or knowledge uh, to other means, yeah. All right, a new extra layer of uh, compliance uh, in China. Elvin, thank you so much for your insights. Thank Good you, talking Alvin. to you.